It seems like all of those private fundraisers that Pete Buttigieg has been holding in the Hamptons is really finally starting to pay off because nobody has more billionaire donors than elitist Pete. In fact, one billionaire loves Pete Buttigieg so much, he's going the extra step to make sure that Pete Buttigieg is elected. Of course, I'm talking about Facebook CEO and data thief Mark Zuckerberg, who even corporate Democrats can acknowledge maybe he should go to jail. Ron Wyden has even said he should possibly be imprisoned for theft of our personal data. But in spite of an emerging bipartisan consensus against Facebook and their various violations, well, Pete Buttigieg is choosing to go in the opposite direction. Rather than trying to rein Facebook in, he is uh, rallying behind Facebook, or at least allowing them to rally behind him. Because as Tyler Pager and Kurt Wagner of Bloomberg reports, Facebook chief executive officer Mark Zuckerberg has privately recommended several potential hires to Pete Buttigieg's presidential campaign, a rare example of direct political involvement from one of tech's most powerful executives. Earlier this year, Zuckerberg sent multiple emails to Mike Schmuel, Buttigieg's campaign manager, with names of individuals that he might consider hiring. Campaign spokesman Chris Meager confirmed. Priscilla Chan, Zuckerberg's wife, also sent multiple emails to Schmuel with staff recommendations. Ultimately, two of the people recommended were hired. Zuckerberg, asked about the emails on a call with reporters Monday, acknowledged that he and his wife passed along hiring recommendations, but said that those actions should not be seen as an endorsement. Zuckerberg, 35, and Buttigieg, 37, overlapped at Harvard, and Buttigieg was friends with two of Zuckerberg's roommates. He was also one of Facebook's first 300 users, but they were only introduced years later by a mutual Harvard friend. Buttigieg, meanwhile, has become somewhat of a darling of Silicon Valley Democrats, repeatedly returning to San Francisco for high-dollar fundraisers. He's been more apprehensive about breaking up big tech companies than some of his Democratic counterparts, saying the issue of monopolies extends beyond tech, but he's also raised concerns about tech companies having too much power and has floated regulation including fines and the blocking of new mergers for Facebook and other big tech companies. And I'm sure that, you know, the coziness with, uh, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Buttigieg's campaign has no influence over his policy position here whatsoever. I'm sure that Zuckerberg is more fearful of fines than facing actual jail time. So Pete Buttigieg, he's really holding Zuckerberg's feet to the fire. I mean, what a joke. What an absolute joke for Pete Buttigieg to be so brazen about his elitism, to wear it on his sleeve, to have this many billionaire donors. I mean, what are you doing? Like, who are you trying to appeal to? It's frustrating to me that Democratic Party primary voters haven't seen past, you know, the bullshit that some of these centrist neoliberal Democrats, these focus group driven poll minded politicians are peddling, but understand that this is not going to fly in a general election because Donald Trump is going to pound Pete Buttigieg for being an elitist. And guess what? That criticism will land. Now, Pete Buttigieg can also say that Donald Trump is an elitist. He's a billionaire, of course, but I mean, Pete Buttigieg is now getting cozy with billionaires. So why would you criticize one billionaire if you're getting cozy with others and billionaires and elitists and celebrities and oligarchs in America love you? I mean, that's not going to be a winning message. You're going to lose. Like, I have no doubt in my mind, if Pete Buttigieg is the nominee, uh, Donald Trump gets a second term. Now, what's scary is that according to at least one new poll from Iowa, Pete Buttigieg is getting a surge, right? He jumped from fourth to third, even surpassing Bernie in at least one poll. So if he wins the nomination, it's bad news for Democrats because this elitist doesn't have a shot. Working class people are not going to turn out and wait in line for hours, try to subvert voter suppression laws to vote for someone who is not going to look out for them. I mean, all the qualities that we disliked about Hillary Clinton are still present with Pete Buttigieg. There's the element of corruption. She took money from special interests and then changed her policy positions as a direct result of that, right? She had private 
and public positions when it comes to policies. Elizabeth Warren explained eloquently how Hillary Clinton changed her position on the bankruptcy bill after she started taking money from the big banks. So Pete Buttigieg, he's already demonstrated his capacity to do just that. Pete Buttigieg, at the start of this primary, let me remind you, supported Medicare for All. And then fast forward a few months, he starts moving against it as the campaign contributions from the private health insurance industry rolls in. And all of a sudden, he's one of the main opponents to Medicare for All. He's an empty suit. He's a fraud. And if you can't see that, then we have to make you see that, right? It's incumbent on us as progressives, as democratic socialists, to shine a light on these types of frauds. Pete Buttigieg has already demonstrated that he doesn't care about policy. He doesn't care about the bad optics. He just is looking out for his own career. That's what he cares about. He is a career-minded politician, and that doesn't really necessarily make him that much different from other politicians. But he wears it on his sleeve a lot more than other people. So nobody in the general election is going to give a flying fuck if you speak 42 languages, if you are the first gay potential president. Nobody is going to care about that. This is what people are going to ask themselves before casting their vote. Is this person going to do something for me that will be worth me giving up my time, possibly taking time from work to vote for him? The answer is likely going to be no, and that will be directly conducive to a victory for Donald Trump. <sighs> you know, you'd think that by now, in this era where you have these fake-ass, thumb-pointing politicians like Pete Buttigieg, they would just be, you know, non-entities. But the fact that he's kind of getting a surge, a second surge possibly, in large part due to his performance at the Democratic debate, it's frustrating. Like, I, I thought that he lost that debate because... It seemed obvious that he was coming across as someone who was deceitful and disingenuous, right, and an opportunist. But because CNN kind of propped him up and let him speak more than uh, Bernie Sanders even, or get at least equal time when he's in a distant fourth place, um, it kind of probably, I'm assuming, gave voters the impression that maybe he is a serious contender. Maybe he's one of the front runners. So this is how media kind of picks and chooses winners. At first, you know, he got a little surge because the media was just reaping nonstop praise and fawning over him, right? And that adoration had a serious impact. And then he had the scandal in South Bend and is struggling to get black support. It jumped from 1% to 2%, so he's, he's not doing well there. But the media could still prop him up uh, regardless because if they start talking about him again and saying how wonderful he is then he can get a second rise, and we're kind of seeing that. But hopefully, this Zuckerberg email revelation will reveal to people that this is not someone to be taken seriously. This is someone who is not looking out for you. He doesn't have your best interests in mind. Pete Buttigieg cares about one person. Pete Buttigieg. That's it. End of story. So if you want to elect someone who cares about you and cares about policy, we all know who that is. It's Bernie Sanders. It's not some fraud like Pete Buttigieg, who's just another technocratic elitist who's going to lose to a buffoon like Donald Trump.